Wait, what's this video about again? Saber, I already told you, we're doing the gender swap episode. Oh, you mean how I'm going to talk about a handful of weird cartoons that did that trope, right? And how a lot of these shows did it strictly for fan service, because it's an easy way to please viewers. Yeah, more or less. Well, I'm just glad that my channel hasn't sunk that low. Oh, no. Gender swap. A very common trope that's especially popular with cartoon shows. You take a guy, make him a girl. Take a girl, make him a guy. By doing so, you're guaranteed some wacky hijinks and, hey, maybe a new perspective on life that a character couldn't see before. Also, fan service. So much fan service. And apparently, that applies to YouTube videos. Wait, what's my name anyway? Am I still called Saber Spark? Or is it Sabrina Spark? Uh, I don't know, Sabi for short? Hell, does that even make sense? Are people even named Sabi? Hold on. Sabi is derived from the Sangha word Ulusaba, which means fearful river, because the river was once teeming with dangerous Nile crocodiles. Yeah, call me Sabi. For this video, we're gonna talk about five gender swap episodes in particular, and they're from the following shows. Adventure Time, The Loud House, Ozzy and Drix, Johnny Bravo, and finally, Johnny Test. Oh God, does it have to be that one? My ears won't survive the whip cracks. <laughs> okay, just one teeny weeny shot and voila, a taller Johnny. You don't need us, break me out. Well, we can give you a suppository. What's that? I am not Before we get into talking about the episodes I just mentioned, I want to do a quick rundown about the gender swap trope and where it came from. For the record, a lot of this is just speculation on my end and piecing together information I found on Wikipedia. According to it, the first book to utilize gender swap was An Exchange of Souls by Barry Payne from 1911. Apparently, this would go on to inspire H.P. Lovecraft's short story, The Thing on the Doorstep, from 1937. Now, to be fair, an exchange of souls is more of a body swap and not specifically a gender swap, but I guess it counts. The story is about a mad doctor who becomes trapped in his fiancée's body after a soul-switching experiment goes wrong. Just like Johnny Test, right? Well, not really. Johnny Test has so much more depth to it. Okay, we want answers. Why did you resist a police officer? Why are you police officers? I blew up Malaysia. Personally, I see Freaky Friday from 1976 as the first movie to really establish the body swap trope, which would eventually give birth to the gender swap trope for mainstream entertainment. But that being said, I'm still not certain what was the first thing to officially include gender swap in its story. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened with Greek mythology. I mean, Zeus turned himself into a swan once. So I'm pretty confident that a fictional character did the gender swap thing way before the 20th century. Now, I feel like I should mention the specific differences between body swaps, gender swaps, and then cross-dressing. Oh lord, I'm about to sound so weird here. A body swap is when two or more characters exchange minds and switch bodies regardless of gender or whatever. A gender swap, according to yourdictionary.com, is the act of changing a fictional character's biological sex and or gender identity from the canonical norm. So, a guy character turning into a girl, for example. And then there's cross-dressing, which I feel I need to bring up. I can only imagine there are a lot of people commenting right now about girly Bugs Bunny and how he's been gender swapping for years. Nope. If anything, Bugs is a master of cross-dressing and knows how to look fierce with his makeup, but I wouldn't call it a gender swap. Props to Bugs Bunny, he's been progressive for decades. Mama, buy me that! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Woo! Overall, the gender swap format is more of a novelty, and I see it being used mainly for fan service. Seriously, who would do something like that? But there are times when gender swaps can be used effectively to tell a story and help a character grow. So let's take a look at five weird episodes that use this trope and what I think about him.
like I said before, there are five gender swap episodes we're gonna talk about specifically. But just know there were plenty to pick from, such as Fairly Odd Parents, Futurama, Dexter's Lab, Being Puppycat, Mr. Meaty, and American Dad, to name a few. By the way, since we've got a lot to cover, I'm gonna keep things to the main points. Let's go! The first on our list is The Loud House, One of the Boys. For those who don't know, this show is about a boy named Lincoln and how he lives in a home with 10 sisters. Feeling overwhelmed, Lincoln wishes that he only had brothers. Lisa, his scientist sister, gives him a watch that takes him to an alternate dimension where he gets his wish. At first, Lincoln loves spending time with all of his gender-bent brothers thinking that it's great, but he soon discovers that life isn't as perfect as he thought it would be. His brothers are mean, aggressive, rude, and worst of all, poor guy lost his bedroom. He then tries to travel back to his own dimension, gets gender swapped himself, and then wakes up from his dream. Or was it? I'm so glad my sisters are nothing like my brothers. Hey Lincoln, I almost forgot something. <laughs> Except for Lynn. Since the premise of Loud House is based on gender, it makes absolute sense that they would do an episode like this shows how crazy life would be in a house of 11 boys instead of 10 girls and a single boy. <sighs> Whoops, sorry. You should be sorry, cause that was weak. <sighs> Next, there's Adventure Time. This show actually did the gender swap stuff quite a few times. Also, according to my sources, the inspiration behind the gender swap idea was due to a staff member of the show named Natasha Allegri. She made sketches of the characters for fun. Pendleton Ward loved them and wanted to make them canon. The first gender swap episode they did, and the one we're talking about, is called Fiona and Cake. Everything in the land of Adventure Time is gender swapped. Finn and Jake are girls, Bubblegum is a boy, even Ice King gets the same treatment. One of the many things that Adventure Time has going for it is how self-aware it can be, and they knocked it out of the park with this episode. I mean, the entire story of Fiona and Cake are based on a fanfic written by Ice King. He's straight up holding Finn and Jake hostage and forcing them to give him good feedback. <laughs> I love it. So, what did you think of the fan fiction I wrote about you guys? Uh... Tell me you thought it was good! Oh, it's good, it's good, it's, it's really good, dude, it was amazing! The episode itself focuses on Fiona and Prince Gumball how she has feelings for him, and how they end up going on a date. Of course, this is very reflective to Finn and the feelings he had for Princess Bubblegum early on in Adventure Time. Legit, this is one of the best gender swap episodes ever made. The designs are familiar to the original characters, but are different enough to be creative with. And of course, the comedy is on point. Good race, Fiona. <sighs> Why are y'all breathless if we're the ones running? Again, I love this episode, and so did a lot of people. This is actually one of the most watched episodes of the entire series with 3.3 million viewers. Adventure Time would revisit this concept a few more times and continue to expand on other gender-bent characters. All in all, they had fun with the trope and were able to tell great stories with the gender swap premise. I like how it is. Yeah, don't yeah. change it. How it is. Let's like go. Way. Everyone get out. Next, there's Ozzy and Drix, out of body experience. Yep, we're back with this one again. The pregnant male episode just wasn't enough. For those who don't know, the movie Osmosis Jones got a cartoon spin-off back in the day, and it was wild. And this episode is no exception. While at the pool, the boy body that Ozzy and Drix protect almost drowns, and the girl character gives mouth to mouth to save his life. In the process, Ozzy gets transferred into the girl's body where he discovers a very feminine world. <sighs> Christine. But things get really weird for Ozzy as he starts to show symptoms of turning into a girl cell. That the girl body that he's in will transform him because it's a girl? 
Which is extra confusing because there's a guy cell who lives in the girl body and he's just fine. Honestly, I don't get it. Yeah, the cops here want me flushed. But on the bright side, I could spend an entire lifetime accessorizing. Oh my, Ozzy, you're beginning to undergo gender morphation. Say what? And the logic gets even worse. So the guy cell I mentioned is the chief of police for the girl's body. Get this though, he's secretly working with pneumonia in order to make the girl's body sick so she doesn't do girly stuff anymore? What? No sports channels, mandatory dance lessons, burping laws. Well now, all that is going to change. I have taken my last ballet class. I want to live! And boy, will I ever! After the pneumoniac invades Christine, there will be no laws, no rules, just chaos! I can do whatever I want with all that money! At the end, the girl version of Ozzy and Drix help Ozzy to stop the chief in pneumonia. Ozzy then takes a motorbike back to his old home. Yeah, this show is crazy. After that, there's Johnny Test. So I was under the impression that there were two gender swap episodes for Johnny Test. I've seen the image of him being a woman before, but apparently that's just a quick scene from an episode. The actual gender swap episode is called Johnny Alternative, and it's uncomfortable. I'll explain. First off, it needs to be said that this show has an addiction to the whip crack sound effect. Stop chewing gum! Nothing good comes from chewing gum, Johnny. Just sticking bubbles and tooth decay! And the problem is your problem. Because when you have cavities and your teeth fall out, don't come crying to me and... This episode has Johnny and his dog Dookie going through a portal to another dimension where everybody's gender is switched. Oh, it's just like Loud House. Johnny and Dookie run into the girl versions of themselves and <sighs> start to fall for them. Blah, 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 fine, indie, fine, fine. <gasps> How dare you? Saying blah, blah, blah is my thing. Let me know when you two lovebirds are done bickering. <laughs> what? Ew. We don't love, love each, each other. other. Ha! Me love him? Never in a million years. Ha! Me love her? Not in a billion trillion years. The girl's name is Joni. The girl dog's name is Dutchie. All four of them team up and start to run around town and keep crushing on each other. At the end, they fight a villain, work together, all four of them almost make out, and then the portal sucks Johnny and Dookie back home. Seriously, this show moves at such a fast pace, it's ridiculous. It enters the realm of hyperactivity and I can't keep up with it. That and the character puppets are super stiff. And finally, we have... Psst, Sabie, tell them about the shirts. The what? The shirts, the new gender swap design with Monkey Moses. <sighs> Fine. And don't forget, folks, we have a new shirt on Teespring that features gender swap art from this video. Go check it out. We good? Yes, thank you. You're doing great. <sighs> Thanks. So, our last episode is Witche Woman from Johnny Bravo. Out of all the gender swap episodes, this one is my favorite. Like I mentioned before, most gender men episodes are a novelty and don't do that much outside of fan service, but Johnny Bravo is an exception. For those who don't know, Johnny Bravo is a show about a dumb, macho guy who is constantly harassing ladies so he can get with them. As you could imagine, he doesn't get much action. But in Which A Woman, Johnny gets a taste of his own medicine, and it's fantastic. It starts off with Johnny running into a magical lady who casts a curse on him. The next day, Johnny discovers that he's a woman. He changes his name to Jenny Bravo and goes into town to find answers. Oh man, I'm a chick! What's up with that? As Johnny makes his way around, he grows jealous of other girls getting all of the attention from guys. So Johnny decides to get a makeover and starts to get a bunch of men catcalling him. Am I in heaven? Cause I am seeing an angel. An angel on earth, baby. <laughs> Man, you're hot. Ew. 
He should try that brushing the tongue thing. Johnny then has a revelation and realizes how bad women have it when it comes to creepy guys who hit on them. Hell, we even get a song. You think that men are pigs, I say we all know that's a fact. So listen to me, sister friend, cause I now have your back. They think they've got it going on, that they're a work of art. Don't pay them any mind and they will fall. Oh, yeah. That girls are smart. Now that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. So Johnny finally comes around and understands that women aren't just for hitting on and that they can be smart. And then he immediately forgets. Real talk, this was a good lesson for Johnny. He sees women in a very specific and degrading light. They're just things that are hot and that's it. Even if it was for a short moment, Johnny realized that girls are more than that and should be valued for their minds and not just their bodies. Too bad Johnny's an idiot, but hey, at least he's better than the other Johnny. female growth hormone. I'm actually mutuals with the writer for this episode of Johnny Bravo, Amy Keating Rogers. I asked her what the inspiration was for the story, and it simply was giving Johnny a taste of perspective. His entire premise is being a macho pig, so turning the tables on him was a good way to show that his behavior is inappropriate. That's why I personally love this episode the most. It's effective, it's fun, and it teaches Johnny a lesson, even if it was just for a moment. In conclusion, gender swap episodes can get really weird. They can also be a lot of fun. But when it comes to telling good stories, it seems to me that gender swap episodes are a one and done kind of thing. As in, you've got a different point of view for your character, and that's really about it. There's not much more you can do with that trope. Adventure Time is the only show I can think of that took the trope and continued to run with it in a creative way. But for most shows, it's just shameless fan service. Seriously, who would do that? Who would change the gender of their character just to get people to watch their stuff? Cheap, uncreative jerks, that's who. And I don't want anything to do with them. Oh... Hey folks, just wanted to thank you again for watching this video. A big shout out to Elsie. She was a voice actor for Sabi for this episode and did a fantastic job. So go check out her stuff. Also, thank you to Cosmo for editing this one. And a big shout out to my patrons and sponsors. Also, a quick update. I recently announced that I'm going to do a works cited page for all of my videos. That way you can see my sources, confirm them for yourself, see what's legit, verify them, all that good stuff. You can find it in the description. All right, thanks for watching. See you all next time.